Hello, everyone. Can you, uh, I just shared my slides. Are you, somebody tell me, yeah, good. So uh, thank you, amazing, amazing opportunities, Lee, appreciate it. I'm sure there's ways that we can partner as well. Uh, I am Dr. Karen Huber. I'm the Associate Director for Graduate Education and Outreach at University of Delaware for the Center of Bioinformatics and Computational Biology. So hello from the cold Northeast. It is sunny today. Uh, traveling to work uh, early on in my career, I went through three states to get there, and one of the things I did was cross the Mason-Dixon line. So I think UD is uh, considered in the South big data hub, but uh, I feel like we're Northeast, uh, especially today's today's weather. So anyway, um, I also wanted to mention, because I'm sure some of you have interacted with her, Dr. Kathy Wu is the director for CBCB. And just recently, I'll mention it in a minute, more recently, we have um, organized the Data Science Institute at University of Delaware, and she's also the director of that. And I am the director for the workforce development for DSI. So hello from Newark, Delaware. Uh, I did, let me see if this advances. Yes, so just briefly the mission of the Center for Bioinformatics, and I know that this is similar to your educational goals as well, and that is to promote, coordinate, and support interdisciplinary activities in bioinformatics and computational biology. Uh, along with that, so CBCB was uh, founded at Delaware in 2010. So our educational platform started at that point along with uh, the, these other components. Uh, we have a core facility which provides, you know, uh, um, resources for folks, researchers in UD, outside of UD, within the region. Uh, we also have a fantastic group of interdisciplinary researchers that are among our UD, but I'm uh, UD campus, but I'm going to be talking about the educational programs that we're offering and some of the initiatives uh, that that we're undertaking. I did want to mention just briefly that our president, Dr. Dennis Desanis, has uh, a strong passion for uh, data science, and he comes from an engineering background. And one of the big initiatives at University of Delaware is to uh, increase our infrastructure. So we are delighted to be a part of a $1.86 million campus or building that was, con was constructed during COVID and then nobody occupied it. Um, but we are delighted to be a, in a very new facility that is embarking on data science and, and research that's happening, biomedical research that's happening across campus. Uh, we also, another one of his initiatives was to increase our um, data science platform. So two years ago, or two and a half years ago, Kathy Wu was highly recruited to be the founding director for our Data Science Institute. And as you can imagine, it is an interdisciplinary research um, collaboration that's happening across campus. Uh, the Center for Bioinformatics, when it, at its origin, and today um, crosses five of our different colleges, but the Data Science Institute encompasses all seven of our, of our uh, graduate college. And as, uh, as written here, you know, we expand from health sciences, physical sciences, environmental sciences, behavioral, social, and public policy. So this is really a research initiative. We don't house, and house any of our academic programs in the DSI. Uh, in, in the Institute, but uh, certainly the, the grant writing and the research funding that is being initiated is dealing with cloud computing and high performance clustering and uh, data science, data database initiatives. Uh, you can read more about that at the website that's attached. Um, and then for the Center of Bioinformatics, as I mentioned, it was established in 2010. And its initiative was one of the first uh, interdisciplinary programs at University of Delaware. So we kind of have been the model for others to follow. Uh, we started out with just three colleges, 
but now have five. So it includes engineering, arts and sciences, ag and natural resources, earth, ocean, environment, health sciences. So we partner with five different colleges and it keeps changing, but at least 20 different departments. Um, and our faculty list because of that keeps growing. You know, two or three years ago, it might've been 60 faculty that are affiliated with CBCB. Now we have probably um, breaching probably about 80 faculty. So essentially when a student is looking for research funding or, or research support, they can uh, look at our, our long list of affiliated faculty that span any of these different colleges or departments and find out what is most passionate um, area of research that they want to be engaged in. Beyond that, we also have regional partners that uh, are locally and regionally, and they're places like Christiana Care and Morris Children's Hospital, which are uh, within 20 miles of our campus. We have a uh, Association Delaware Biosciences that really collaborates with industry partners, startup companies, uh, nonprofits in Delaware, and is an amazing resource for regional partnership, um, industry, academia, and government. And then we also, our program obviously will hold weekly seminars and is in strong in internship opportunities for our students independent studies uh, for our master's and our PhD students. So I wanted to go briefly because my role is on the academic advisement side. I am not involved in the, the data science research. So I hold a staff position in um, developing new programs for the Center for Bioinformatics and advising students matric from matriculation to degree completion. So I wanted to just give you an, a little bit of an evolution of where our program started and where it um, is now, because this is at the heart of what, um, what I keep trying, it's the heart of what I do. So at the very beginning, we started our program with uh, developing a master's and it was called Bioinformatics and Computational Bi Biology Masters and one of our first certificates. Um, and you can see there it was 2010. And, and from that, we built one, two additional programs. Um, we have the professional science masters. And then later on, a couple years later, we did the PhD. Um, it has evolved over time. It was strictly or more traditional bioinformatics and computational biology that centered and focused more in systems biology and you know the broader the broader genomics, but we have um, more recently with uh, permanent status of the PhD, we've rebranded that PhD. It used to be called bioinformatics and systems biology. It is now bioinformatics data science because of the global initiative of uh, increasing data science and particularly in the biomedical or the bioinformatics sector. So that was um, what we have, um, that was a part of us changing and rebranding the, the name of the PhD. So as you know, graduate level certificates have been a fantastic way to not only, we're finding in our program, not only to bring people in from other disciplines such as biological sciences, um, um, marine biology, but it's bring and it's allowing those students within UD to take graduate level courses to expand their portfolio uh, in the area of bioinformatics. And it's been a fantastic opportunity. Our graduate level certificates have been a fantastic opportunity for our students in other concentrations to learn data science. And it really, um, it really adds to their portfolio when they're looking for a job. So uh, it's very highly popular. Our graduate level certificates are highly popular with our students on campus. They double count, the courses double count. If they have an elective, if they're getting their PhD, the uh, courses double count for an elective in their PhD and also to help them earn a graduate level certificate. 
But it also then our focus is, is for the workforce development for those that are in another career or, or in their career and they're now needing to do data science. So our core courses for all of these degrees build off of that graduate certificate. And it was traditionally in the past, um, four courses would gain you a graduate certificate. Uh, and they, the courses were bioinformatics, systems biology, database, and programming. Uh, and then those four, and biostat as well, so say, let's say five, those five courses were the foundation for the graduate certificate, but also then we built the master's and the PhD and the PSM on those same five courses. So what we find is there is a real uh, transition in our student population over time. Some may be getting their master's in uh, biological sciences. They take a couple of our courses in the graduate certificate and realize that they count for you know, their master's degree, but if they take two more, they can get a certificate on top of that. And so it expands um, their opportunities, but we also find that it's a feeder into our program. Uh, once they get that BS or biological sciences master's, they, many of, not maybe not many, but several of our students transition into a PhD in, in bioinformatics data science. So we, we find that the graduate certificates are uh, useful for workforce development, but also useful in potential opening career opportunities up and changes in academic platform for some of our students. Um, along with that is an initiative that we started about five years ago, way before COVID hit was to um, convert our on-campus courses into an online platform. And we were able to do that with initi internal initiatives and push from the graduate uh, college at UD to provide grants to allow us to redesign these courses to an online platform. So all of our bioinformatics classes are offered 100% online. Uh, and we've slowly transitioned our on-campus courses to 100% online. And we are now offering these in a hybrid or synchronous model. So, and we're finding that to be the sweet spot for students. There's no tuition difference regardless of, of the platform. We're finding that the offering a hybrid option where the students once a week can have a discussion section with the faculty and other students, and you're bringing the whole cohort together, the whole class together has been a really positive um, addition to our online option. Uh, it just causes a way to connect, answer questions, and we find that it reduces the amount of time that the faculty is spending individually one-on-one -on -one with students because they can all have this time together. So it's, it's a community building for, for the courses as well. In addition to that, we are applying for, or we have um, just recently applied for the, the T32 NIH uh, pre-doctoral training grant. This training grant would, uh, it was for any of you that might be involved in a T32 training grant, it's a huge initiative. Uh, it is encompassing 30 faculty on campus. And our goal is to, we are applying for uh, six uh, PhD slots to train um, doctoral students with uh, an emphasis on um, underrepresented minorities. I am one of the, the MPIs on that training grant. And uh, if you haven't applied for a T32 training grant, I think, I think our grant um, application was uh, close to 400 pages. So it was a, a major undertaking that was a whole team um, involved. So I don't wanna go into too much detail about the academic um, courses that we're offering other than just to list them. And I've mentioned many of them already. Computational systems biology is another course that's highly uh, valuable for our PhD students. And they are taught by faculty from across campus and even some of our research faculty 
is are teaching, are teaching the courses for us. Another additional set of courses is applied machine learning, uh, intro to data science, big data analytics and healthcare, which is one of the newer initiatives is to expand our course base for the biomedical and um, health informatics side. We are also developing some one credit courses because we think that the PhD students, as they're there taking, doing their research, there are other courses that would be highly beneficial for them um, as they are engaged in active research. So uh, a course that we developed, which has become highly popular is data science with online competitions. And this is actually taking Kegel data or the Kegel competitions and we're incorporating that into the classroom. So it's developing team science and, and uh, more of a team, a group environment and, and working all, everybody working together to uh, maybe solve an actual problem outside of the research that they're engaged in. And then another uh, big data in social behavioral health sciences and another one credit course. And we have uh, feeling and I'm working one, uh, one of the other working groups, ethics is a big part of uh, data science, but interestingly enough, our master's students have to take an ethics class, but our PhD students do not. So we are offering that in a three credit or a one credit option. And this class is going to continue to grow and expand for us because of its usefulness across all of our many, many disciplines more than just um, bioinformatics. So for our, these are our three different certificates we offer. Um, the last one is the new one, the certificate in biomedical informatics and data science. So they would be able to pick what really what we're, our goal is, is to take our workforce group that are interested in, in expanding their uh, knowledge. We would like them to be able to pick and choose what kind of classes they want to take at what kind of knowledge they want to learn to help increase their workforce um, portfolio is, is changed to bioinformatics and data science. So again, we do academic advisement. That would be my primary goal um, in helping the students uh, go to degree completion. We hold seminars that are in-house students do them external partners, and they are highly engaging and helps the students to network from with others. And then we have a very active bio student, bio, bioinformatics student association that is actively engaged in creating uh, workshops for the students, doing social events. Uh, one thing that's very popular is the, carp the uh, carpentry software workshops, and we launch them twice a year. And this is to help bring those that aren't uh, familiar with data science, give them more exposure. So the, our BSA group is highly, highly interactive and engaging with the student body. And then we are just really delighted with the, uh, the, what our students are be able to do beyond um, their degree. And so we span a uh, broad alumni base in many different career opportunities, whether they're an MD, PhD, software engineer uh, in the health, health sciences. So we're delighted to see what um, this academic platform is, is allowing them to do in their next steps. So we have an active um, Instagram, Facebook, social media site that um, our students keep trying to update and increase engagement from from around the, the area. And that is my uh, introduction to University of Delaware Center for Bioinformatics. Thank you.